Starting a 3D print farm has never been easier, as companies make 3D printers more and more user-friendly, and they literally work out of the box, the need to be an expert in 3D printing becomes less and less of a requirement. Welcome to the channel. If we haven't met, my name is Sam. I am the real estate broker turned 3D printing entrepreneur. I have built many businesses in and around 3D printing, including a six-figure 3D print farm. And spoiler alert, you can actually build a multi-machine print farm on a single shelving unit that can generate you $5,000 a month in revenue. Last year, I released a video talking about the gear I would get if I was starting a print farm today. In that video though, it was very much geared toward the idea of starting a print farm with a retail mindset, selling your prints on places like Etsy and Amazon. If you haven't seen that video and you wanna see it, stick around because I'll link to it at the end of this video. A bunch of you have watched that video and loved it, but a lot of comments and questions I get are actually about how do I set up an actual print farm? Not just like the theory behind it, but like physically, how do we actually build a print farm? So that's what we're talking about today. So stick with me till the end and you will learn about what racks we use, how we put those racks together to improve print quality and everything else you need to consider when actually building your print farm. The foundation of any good print farm are the racks the printers sit on. There's a lot of suppliers that will sell you lots of different shelving units and it really doesn't matter what brand you go with. What you're looking for is beefiness of the shelving unit itself. It needs to be strong enough to hold multiple printers per shelf, and the more heavy duty it is, the less it's going to transfer vibrations from machine to machine, which is gonna improve your print quality, which we'll get into in a minute. When looking to buy your first shelving unit, there are some things we can look for that'll tell us if we're on the right track in getting that heavy duty shelving unit. First, let's look at the title itself. Most of the time, it's gonna have some language in there that says heavy duty, or it might even say industrial. The second thing we're gonna look for is on the end support pieces. On the face of those, you're gonna have some notches or cutouts. Those are actually there so you can adjust the height of each individual shelf. Most of your budget shelving or not so heavy duty ones aren't gonna have that option. The shelving height is gonna be set. The third thing we're gonna look for is also on the end pieces. If you have diagonal cross bracing on those pieces, that's another sign that you're buying a heavy duty shelf. Most of the heavy duty or industrial shelves can support upwards of 500 plus pounds per shelf. And oftentimes there's three or four shelves per rack. So those cross pieces are there to help keep everything in and support all that weight. So if the shelving you're looking at checks all three of those boxes, it's a good sign that you are buying a high quality, heavy duty shelving unit. All right, we got our rack, but we're actually not done with it yet. Because most industrial and heavy duty shelving is designed to be in like a garage where you're gonna be putting totes on it, the actual shelving support, the piece that you're gonna set the printer on, oftentimes comes with this metal grid system, which isn't great for actually setting a printer on it. My preference is for the shelf to actually be made of wood, and if you can find a rack that comes with wood, that's great, but if not, you can always just buy some three quarter inch plywood and cut it yourself. I'm in the Midwest and a big home improvement store here is Menards. I was actually able to find some of these prefab boards that are designed exactly for shelving units. They come as individual pieces and then notched together to make a full width for your shelving unit. In total, I'm sure I paid more for these prefab boards than I would have had I bought a piece of three quarter inch plywood and cut it to size. However, if I can ever trade money for time, I'm always gonna make that trade. Before we put the boards in, we actually have one final step, and this step is to help reduce vibration and movement to help improve your print quality. We're gonna have three printers per shelf, so we wanna limit the effects one printer has on the other printers. And there's a super easy way to accomplish this, and I got this trick from Shop Nation's YouTube, and I thought it was a great one. You can buy some of that foam weather stripping that you can use for doors or windows in the winter time and actually apply that between the rack and the wood itself. Usually it's sticky on both sides so you can stick it down to the steel shelving and then put your pieces of wood on top of it and it makes a nice gasket or flexible barrier between the wood and the printer rack, reducing a lot of that vibration and movement that the printers would cause. And then one final benefit of these prefabbed shelving boards is you actually don't have to connect them. So like I'm setting up here, I put one printer on each board 
and they don't actually connect, which means each printer is kind of on its own island. Now that the rack is built, we can start thinking about the printers that we're gonna put on it. Huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Flash Forge. They sent me out three of their Adventure 5 Pro and one of their Adventure 5 3D printers to use in our mini print farm build. You can tell Flash Forge has made these machines with print farms in mind. I've been using these printers for the last couple months to get ready for this video, and they've been absolute workhorses. Flash Forge has actually created an entire white paper on building a 3D print farm. In addition to that, they also have created bulk pricing just for 3D print farms. You can actually get the price per unit of your Adventure 5 as low as $210 or the Adventure 5 Pro for as little as $339. If you're interested in seeing that white paper or finding out more information on any of Flash Forge's products, we'll make sure to link them below. Since these printers are essentially just a box, it makes it really easy to get them on the print rack and lined up. Aesthetics is important to me, so having them fully enclosed just makes them look awesome lined up on the print rack and it's just something I care about and I love it. Now, Flash Forge does recommend that you leave about two feet of space behind your print rack so you have access to the back of the machines. I don't really have an extra two feet of space here, so I'm putting mine tight to the wall, but I will say one miss with these printers is that the filament spool is stored on the back of the printer. So if you don't have that extra two feet to give, it is a bit of a pain to have to go up over top or feed your hand between two printers and fiddle with the spool to try to get it off and reloaded. All that being said though, if you are gonna be putting this into a print farm production system, more than likely you're probably gonna be working with bigger size spools anyway, and you may find it more advantageous to come up with your own sort of filament spool feeding system instead of using the back mount on the printer. The next thing we need to think about is actually powering all of our printers. In Flash Forge's white paper, they do a good job laying out their recommendations for power based off your farm size. Essentially, you don't want any more than 24 printers on a 40 amp circuit. Now, I'm actually running 20 amp circuits down here, which means I could have up to 12 printers per circuit. So the four I'm gonna have on this rack is really gonna be not a problem at all. All right, in case it's not clear, I am not a licensed electrician. I have no idea how the electrical system in your home or your office is set up. So please do your own research, follow your own local and municipal codes, and assume that how I have it set up here may or may not work for your situation. With all that being said, as you add more and more printers to your print farm, power considerations and the amount of circuits you have available will become more and more important. So just know that as you get into this, that a future problem may be how to construct your electrical system so that it can support the amount of printers you need. All right, we got a printer rack. We have printers on the rack. Let's talk filament. If you're still here, you're probably pretty serious about 3D printing, and if that's true, you've probably been poking around other 3D printing spaces and watching other videos. That is awesome. Now, if you've come across a video that tells you you need to negotiate bulk discounts on filament when you're just getting started, that person is wrong. When it comes to running a print farm and managing print farm expenses, the actual cost of filament is low on that list. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy 50 and $60 spools of filament. What I am saying though, is that those 14 to $20 filaments that you can buy on Amazon is just fine. Those are not gonna make the difference of whether you profit or don't profit this month. Here is a real snapshot of a 30 day period in our print farm. We did about 25,000 in gross sales with about 12,500 in cost of goods. If we look deeper at what makes up those cost of goods, you can actually see the bulk of it is labor. Like every business, human labor in your print farm is going to be your highest expense. The actual filament cost on 25,000 in sales, we can see is actually $350. So even if I got all my filament given to me for free, zero, it would have only profited me an extra 350 in a month that I did 25,000 in revenue. It is a small percentage of your cost of goods and has a small effect on your actual profit every month. Am I saying you should never negotiate filament deals? Absolutely not. There is a time and place for everything. However, if you are building your first rack with your first printer, 
do not waste your time trying to talk to AliExpress or Alibaba, trying to negotiate a pallet of filament. Go to Amazon, buy the few spools you need, make a few sales, prove concept of your print farm that you can actually make money and worry about the bulk filament discounts way down the road. So that talks about filament pricing, but what filament brand or model or type should we actually get? The short answer is whatever filament works the best and most consistently for you. A lot of what we sell this time of year are our different controller stands, and the majority of those that we sell are sold in black. So I have been putting a ton of the Flash Forge PLA matte black through these printers, and it has printed flawlessly for me all season. You can get a two pack for 26 bucks, which puts it at a per spool price that is very competitive with lots of the major brands in the 3D printing space. All right, let's do some math and total up our mini print farm build. The rack you should be able to find from any of the local home improvement stores that's closest to you, or even Costco often has them, and they should be around 200 bucks. The prefabbed wood shelving that I used ran for about five bucks a piece, and I put three or four, I think, per shelf. So taking that plus the little weather stripping, I'm at about 50 bucks total for both of those things. All right, now the printers themselves, if you're not taking advantage of the bulk pricing, are gonna run you $3.99 for the Adventure 5 and $4.99 for the Adventure 5 Pros. So for my build here with three Pros and one regular, I'm looking at $1,896 in 3D printers. This brings the total for our four printer mini print farm to $2,146. All right, let's play a fun what if game. Say you manage to get some business and you're able to keep these printers running 14 hours a day. That's about a 58% uptime, which is very doable. And let's assume you're running them at $3 of profit per hour. Now, if you're not familiar with pricing for a 3D print farm and why I picked $3 per hour, we've done some videos on our pricing structure and why we think $3 is the minimum that we should be priced at. So if you're interested in hearing about that, make sure to check out some of our other videos that are linked below. So if we have 14 hours uptime per day at $3 profit per hour, that means every hour we are profiting $12 across the four printers. If we multiply that by the 14 hours of uptime per day, we're making a profit of $168 per day or about $5,040 per month. Now, of course, this is easier said than done, and I wouldn't expect a print farm that is currently doing zero in revenue to go to 5,000 in revenue overnight or even in a one month period. But that's what's great about 3D printing is you don't have to buy four printers to start with. You can start with one, and as your business grows and you get more sales, you can add printers as you go. All right, as promised, here is the other video. If you wanna get even further into the weeds of running a 3D print farm, make sure to give that video a watch and I'll see you over there.